So, hello and uh, welcome back again. Um, I will give you an overview of uh, um, Barrios, tell you what it is, and um, let's get started. First, who am I? My name is Andreas Rogge. I'm developing Barrios for a living, like uh, all my colleagues. Um, and I do customer support at Barrios GmbH and Co. KG. Um, I'm a long-time user of Barrios, and with long time, I mean long time like since the project started, and there was a predecessor which I've been using like almost 20 years. Um, I have a background in IT operations and systems administrations. Um, yeah. So, where do I work? Barrios GmbH and Co. KG is the company that funds the Barrios project. Um, with whatever the project needs, like build systems, developers, coffee, you name it. <laughs> um, it's also a business that provides binary package subscriptions. Um, you can have technical support, uh, where you can talk to me if you want to. Um, we offer training and um, we have partnerships with local uh, providers. Um, the local providers also allow us to um, provide the support in local languages. So we do it for English and, of course, German, because that's our native language. Um, but we also have uh, Dutch, um, French, um, Spanish, I think. Yes, yes something. Russian? I'm not sure. Not really. Not anymore. Um, so, if you're uh, like Barrios, you will probably find uh, some, some local partner in your language if you want to have support. Um, and, yeah. So, that's for this. So, what is Barrios? Um, the name is, um, yeah somewhat of an acronym for Backup Archiving Recovery Open Source. Now, what, the, uh, what does that mean? First of all, it is open source. So everything is released under AGPL and other compatible licenses like BSC licenses, OpenLDAP license, Zlib license, some public domain stuff. Uh, everything we program for ourselves is AGPL but we're standing on a lot of uh, great uh, libraries and projects which may have different licenses. Everything we do, and I really mean everything we do, we release on GitHub. There is no uh, open core or whatever. All code is always on GitHub. Um, however, open source doesn't mean open binaries. So if you want to have the latest binaries, you can have a subscription from us. Or you have to build it yourself, or your distributor needs to do. It's extensible, um, which is an important point for a backup, backup solution. We have um, a lot of methods uh, how to extend the system. The usual backup system can move files from A to B and back. Um, maybe you want to do something before you move the files so you can add a script. Maybe you have something complicated, which is not a file. So you need some specific uh, way to, to actually do the backup. So you can write a plugin. There's um, uh, a plugin interface in every of the components. So you can extend everything of the system. And if that's not enough, it's open source, you can change it. Um, if you want to add something, open a pull request. It's network-based. Um, Everything runs um, over the network, so um, if you do a backup, it's passed from the system that is backupped to a system that uh, takes the backup over an IP network, IPv4, IPv6. Um, and we do encryption by default. So um, all network connections, starting with uh, Barrios 18.2, unless you explicitly disable it, will uh, use TLS with pre-shared keys. 
which you already have configured because for Boreos you need pre-shared keys. Um, and every connection will be encrypted by default with uh, OpenSSL. Um, what else? It's multi-platform and it really is. Right now we um, build binaries for at least 13 platforms, um, including major Linux distributions like uh, the whole Red Hat stuff, SUSE, uh, Debian, Ubuntu. Um, we also have uh, binaries for FreeBSD, um, Mac OS, and uh, Windows, and some of the con commercial Unixes like Solaris, HP UX, and AIX. Um, so you can build for more systems if you need it and you have a C++11 compatible compiler, we can probably make it work. And probably you can even make it work yourself. Um, last but not least, it's, uh, it has an enterprise focus. So some of the features are targeted to an enterprise audience, like you get a catalog where you can do your, um, your, your reviews um, so you know what files went where and when did this happen. You can configure detailed data retention, how long to keep stuff around. Um, these are great features for all users, but uh, they made it into the project because they are interesting for enterprise users. Uh, that doesn't mean we, we don't want um, normal people or home users to use the product. It's just the focus uh, is on the enterprise, whatever an enterprise is. <laughs> yeah. Ah, and lastly, don't forget, it's a backup software. <laughs> so basically, as I said, it moves files from a source to some destination, and once you lost the files on the source or you don't want them, you can just move them back. Um, so that is what Parios is. How does it work? This is an overview diagram of uh, the architecture. And I'll try to, yeah, um, I, I try to explain um, what the components are and what, what happens. Um, so in the center you have a Barrios server, so this is a sales slide. That's why it's not saying Barrios director. Um, the component is called... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! Um, so the uh, main component is the Barrios director, which does the whole scheduling, and uh, most of the configuration goes there. So uh, what uh, backup sets should be uh, done when, from where, to where, is all managed by the director. The director also has um, a catalog of everything that has happened and is uh, restorable. So as long as you have um, your, your um, uh, catalog entries and media available, you can restore and you can also look what happened and what were the log records um, of the original backup, for example. Um, Then the scheduling itself and the, the jobs that run move data from some kind of, of source, which is the file daemon, to some kind of uh, destination, which is the storage daemon, or for restore the other way around. Um, the file daemon can do, of course, files. Um, and as I already mentioned, there are plugins. So you can, for example, connect it uh, to a vCenter um, system and uh, backup snapshots of your VMware service. Um, you can efficiently um, do backups of a ClusterFS with uh, ClusterFind through another plugin where you don't have to move through all single file, um, but it can just efficiently query Gluster what has changed. Um, I think there's something for um, 
for, for uh, Ceph to do something like this for CephFS, um, which is basically the same thing. We can do backup uh, Microsoft SQL Server on a Windows machine um, with uh, uh, incremental backups, I think. Um, we have uh, NDMP support, so if you have a large filer that, that supports NDMP, we can also back up this. Um, we have also some uh, newer plugins which are now in core to back up, uh, for example, MySQL databases. This has been a contribution uh, that is somewhat older. It's now part of the core, so there's a plugin for this. Um, we also have a plugin for uh, Overt or Red Hat virtualization, which is new. So you can also back up and restore these virtual machines. Um, adding plugins is not that hard. We try to make it even easier. So um, I hope we are going to see much more things you can back up and restore with Parios very, very soon. On the other hand, the search daemon, um, yeah, it can write to the um, usual suspects like disk storage, obviously, um, tapes and tape auto changers. Um, where you can just uh, store the data. Um, on the tape auto changer, you can also have uh, tape encryption, hardware tape encryption, and we can write to uh, the cloud, which uh, may be an S3 backend, a Ceph backend, um, cluster FS, as described. And you can um, do disk to disk uh, to tape, for example, so you can migrate from one storage to the other and back and from one data center to the other and back, if you want to. So that's what it does. Um, what are the key features? Or what do I believe are the key features of Parios? First of all, the catalog database. So for a lot of the uh, simpler um, backup systems you find around, you can take backups, you can restore them. But you have no way to say like, okay, what backups of that file on that server in that directory do I have and where are they stored? Um, so that's one of the great strengths I believe Barrios has. Um, encryption on multiple levels. I already mentioned TLS encryption by default for all TCP connections. Um, I also mentioned uh, hardware encryption for LTO tape drives. But we can also do something uh, that is um, called zero-knowledge backup, where the file daemon actually has um, uh, uh, a private key um, and a public key and uh, encrypts the data with its public key. It's stored on the SD. The SD can't read it. Uh, the director has the metadata, so it knows how the files are called, but it can never uh, look into them. And only the file daemon itself, with the correct private key, can then um, decrypt the data when it's restored. So if you have documents which are um, problematic, you can just back up your bosses or your, your um, human resources uh, people's laptop with this and the administrator has no chance to uh, take a look at the files. Also, it's uh, quite firewall friendly. Um, it's, uh, it works over the network, as we always said. Um, there is not that much of uh, uh, different network ports that are used. Um, and you can choose the direction. So you have a single port per connection. The file daemon to the storage daemon is one connection, and the director to both other daemons are the, other, are the others, and you can choose in which direction these are open. So you can configure your client to actually connect to your server if you don't know the IP address of the client because it's DHCP, for example. Um, but you can, for example, also make sure that all, um, that the connection from the storage machine to the client that is backup happens in that direction and not the other way around as a default. For example, if you, the machine you are backing up is in, um, is in a DMZ, so you have to poke a hole 
into the firewall, of course, but just in the direction into the DMZ and not the other way around. Um, NDMP support is one big thing, not so much for the, the normal for the normal customer, but um, for larger companies with uh, NetApp filers, that's really, really <coughs> relevant. We have a plugin interface that I already mentioned um, that is great. So you can just extend uh, everything with uh, C++ and uh, Python, um, which makes things really, really simple. So what's new? What did we change? What did we change in the project? First of all, nowadays, all our commits go into the master branch. This might seem obvious. Um, to us, it wasn't. Now it is. We adapted the GitHub flow, which actually means we work on things, um, publish them as a pull request, discuss them publicly, even the changes we do internally, and then either accept them or we don't. We try to get the community more involved. We had uh, quite a few community contributions last year, and uh, we hope we get a lot better at that. Um, we do code reviews for every changes which is actually happening because of the GitHub flow. Um, so every pull request one of our core developers opens is peer reviewed by another core developer before it is uh, moved into master. Um, we have much improved automated testing. I don't want go to go into detail too much, but I think the number of automated tests has at least doubled, if not tripled, in the last year. Um, we have uh, upgraded our continuous integration system to work much faster, do better tests, and um, we nowadays build every commit um, on every branch, so we know Everything we do builds and works for um, everything but the, uh, the Unix uh, platform. So um, the Linux, uh, FreeBSD, and stuff, is everything automatically built and tested. So every change, even if you have a pull request, we can just wait for it to build, take a look at it, and tell you, OK, that's a great idea, but it doesn't work on FreeBSD, sorry. Um, we moved the documentation to REST which um, um, is basically a good idea because it's much simpler to edit um, than the latex documentation uh, was before. Um, and now, actually, we, we start to, to, um, uh, to push our, ourselves and each other to open a pull request which already includes the documentation for the change, um, which is a huge improvement. So what changed in the software? What are the notable features of 19.2? We have the Percona Extra backup plugin finally in the core. So many people have been using it. Um, we have a plugin to backup Overt and Red Hat virtualization, um, which uh, will be in a, in a separate talk. I'm not going into detail very much now. We now can run a job when a client connects to the director. So if you have a laptop, for example, you can set it up so if you come to the office and plug it in and it hasn't run a backup for some time, it will just start when you, when you connect it. We have a database copy tool, which is probably still somewhat experimental. Um, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but you can copy your MySQL catalog into a PostgreSQL database. So for people who want to migrate, uh, this may be a good idea. Many people on the mailing list ask for that. Um, we have finally um, <coughs> the Python by Rios client library um, has now added support for the TLS encryption of the new protocol. So that was the last thing that didn't do encryption by default. And we have some minor performance improvements. I'm not going into detail too much on that. So what's our future direction? Where do we want to go? 
We want to partition the file table. If you have a Boreas installation and you have more than just a few clients, you might have noticed this gets somewhat big. Um, we try to, to uh, cut this down. It's not completely uh, decided how, what, and when, but that's going to happen. We will have a lot of new plugins for the file daemon, at least I hope so. Um, for example, for PostgreSQL, um, for maybe object storages, so you can just back up your S3 if you want to. Um, we will try to improve the day-to-day -day user experience. Um, there's a lot of, of little things that can be improved, which are really simple to do. For example, if you uh, say you want to restore before a certain point in time, you have to give this point in time right now down to the second, which just doesn't make sense. It's a simple change, but I think we have like 50 of these which we can just do and hopefully that will happen. We want to do deduplication. Um, on the one hand, uh, get deduplication friendly. Um, so if you have a system that can do block level deduplication, uh, the data rewrite on the SD will be deduplicated and maybe in the end even um, automatic deduplication in the SD backend itself. Um, that's a very future story, but it's a direction um, in which we want to go. Also, we want to overhaul the device reservation lo logic. Um, this becomes obvious once you have tried Barrios with a tape auto changer with more than two tape drives. It sometimes does really, really strange things. And uh, we will probably uh, will have to find just a new way to do this. So lastly, if you want to get involved in the project, maybe contribute the plugin, um, whatever, you can get in touch with us uh, using the mailing lists, various users at googlegroups.com for day-to-day -day chat and Barrios Devil for development talk. You can take a look at GitHub. Uh, we have a lot of things going on there right now. Uh, we had a lot of pull requests. You can review our code, please. If you look at our code, leave a comment. If it sucks, tell us. Um, and you can, of course, get in touch at the next events. At this event, of course, we are, also, uh, we are all around. And uh, the next events will be uh, scale in Pasadena in the USA. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it takes place uh, at the beginning of March. Um, then we will be present at Open Expo Europe in Madrid, um, which is on, in June. And we have an OS camp also in June after the Open Source Data Center Conference, which is dedicated to uh, Barreos, uh, a whole day, I think. Yes. Um, and also, this is more, more or less tentatively, but we try to uh, make FrostCon in St. Augustine in August work for us, too. So um, I don't know how much time I have left for questions. Two. Hmm. So any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Fork on Barrowettes, which has a commit from 2017. Is that actually the way to go to use S3 as a backend? Yes and no. For you, right now as a user, yes. For us, in the long term, probably not. So we will have an S3 backend. We will probably replace the current S3 backend with a different one. But up until this has happened, the S3 backend that is right there now will be supported. I think you were first. Sorry. Question in regards to firmware. I've used this project a product a few years ago, and uh, I could recall you would have to install agents on the VMs. Is it will it work uh, as an agent plus uh, solution? Is it still required to install agents? Yeah. You, you, can, you can install an agent into the virtual machine, but you don't have to. 
Um, if you install the agent in the virtual machine, you just back up the virtual machine like you would with a physical machine. Uh, if you have a dedicated machine on the vCenter that does the backup, it will take a snapshot of the virtual machine, backup that, and you can then do differential and incremental backups based on change block tracking in VMware. So the, the comment from the back was, uh, it doesn't work with an ESXi. You need a vCenter license, uh, license for that. Yes. Um, so, so you, sorry. You had uh, in, your, in your picture of the source and destination, set mates in both places. Uh, yes. What, what kind of set interfaces are you supporting? Is it, is it set by best? That's a good question. Ceph is what, what? my, uh, I, I have. This, uh, What, what? Yeah. So uh, I, I know we have a customer that actually backups his cluster onto Ceph. <laughs> I don't know why, but they do it. Yeah. And they have a large amount of data. So. <laughs> Not really a simple one. Okay. You can ask me about that later if you want to, but okay. it's probably out of scope. But okay. good question. Do we have time's up? Sorry. <laughs> catch catch me somewhere else. <laughs>